Hello, welcome to the sideboard here at StarCityGames.com Modern Open in Indianapolis. I'm Nick Miller alongside our number 12 on the leaderboard, Todd Stevens. How are you doing, sir? Very good, Nick. Good to have you here on the sideboard. We've seen you play quite a bit over the last year. You've kind of been going all in on the SCG Tour here. And uh, you were definitely playing the Eldrazi in modern pre-bannings. Yeah. Uh, and now you have brought a ban Eldrazi deck to the table here post Ayavugan banning, and it seems to be doing pretty well for you. Five and one so far. Mm -hmm. uh, talk about the deck and kind of where it came from and you know the changes you've made since the bannings and whatnot. All right, so during the, when Ayavugan was still legal, um, the Eldrazi, uh, Bant Eldrazi first came on the scene from LSV and uh, he brought out uh, Eldrazi Displacer and Drowner of Hope and show, showed the power between those two cards. And even with Eye of Ugin banned, that's still just an incredibly powerful synergy. And we still have uh, Eldrazi Temple, and we have Ancient Stirrings that can uh, help find the Eldrazi Temple. And um, I don't know where to go from there. Right. The, so you said uh, you were talking with Michael Majors. He had given you kind of a list off the top of his head, and then you started filling in the rest of the gaps. Yes. Um, Michael Majors just uh, kind of came up with the Bant deck, um, him and Jerry, because Jerry played uh, Green Red Eldrazi last weekend, and it wasn't last weekend. It was like, uh, two weekends ago. But. Two weekends ago, and uh, they were just playing with a Bant deck in their head, and they thought it might even be better, and so I just went from there and been testing it and added a few cards. Right, so, you know, we used to have things like Endless One and Eldrazi mm -hmm. Mimic because those cards were so good with Iogan. No longer in the format, though. You got some other all-stars to the format. Noble Hierarch, Tarmogoyf. These cards are good everywhere. Might as well slot them in here. Yeah, I mean, I loved them in Naya Company whenever I played Naya Company earlier in the year. They had just Noble Hierarch and Tarmogoyf are just great cards that have uh, just pillars of the format. And uh, right now, with the Eldrazi costing so much, sometimes you need something to do early game. And what's better than Hierarch and Tarmogoyf? Yeah, some of the strongest plays you can make on the curve. Of course, you got Path to Exile to go along with Ancient Stirrings as a good way to find the Eldrazi you're looking for? Yeah, I started with Dismember as a removal spell, and it just cost too much life, even though it was so efficient. And sometimes it's hard to get white mana, but Path to Exile is just second to none yeah. in versatility. The best rate that you're going to get in the format. Exactly. Then we get into the bulk of the Eldrazi that we all know and love. You've got the Mattery Shaper, the Displacer, yep. Thought Not Seer, Reality Smasher, Drowner Hope, and then of course a World Breaker in here as well. So you're basically like the old style Eldrazi decks, ramping into just big creatures that are beating down. Yes, and um, so I started with just a play set of all the regular ones, but the Displacer, how it doesn't match up very well against Lightning Bolt, and I was, I was struggling with some of the longer control decks like Jund or Grixis, and so that's why I put in the extra World Breaker in there also. And so with World Breaker, Drowner of Hope, the, the deck now has a really good late game. Yeah, back when Eldrazi was running rampant, the Lightning Bolt count was probably at the lowest it's been in Modern. So yeah. you got to, got to get away with playing some more of the cheaper ones, Displacer. But it's still so powerful with Drowner of Hope, mm -hmm. Thought Not Seer, that you just can't go fewer than three, right? Yeah, it just has so much versatility. It can, it can literally do so much. So, and with Eldrazi Temple being able to undercost it also, it's just vital to the deck. Okay. So you had played Abzan Company in Milwaukee. What made you change back to Eldrazi? Well... Absent Company is just, it is the best deck in the format, if you ask me, but I, I was just expecting so much hate for the deck, and I saw so much hate there that I was just tired of trying to slosh through all the hate, and I just wanted something new. I just wanted to play big creatures. That's my style, like Naya Company, just play huge mm -hmm. creatures and just smush people. Right. Which uh, brings us to the sideboard. You said Abzan Company is a very tough matchup. So yes. not one, not two, not three. A full four-play set, Graft Digger's Cage here to kind of shut down the Abzan Company matchup? So I started, yeah, so the, the Abzan Company matchup, you can't win game one. So you need something in your sideboard. So I started with multiple Graft Digger's Cages and Rest in Pieces, because Rest in Pieces is great against Jund and Grixis as well, as well as other decks. But whenever I added Tarmogoyf into the deck, then I was really not too happy to be playing Rest in Peace anymore, because right. I'd have to board them out. And so Graft Digger's Cage, the other great part about Graft Digger's Cage is you can find it with Ancient Stirrings. If you just have Ancient Stirrings in your opener, that's almost always a Graft Digger's Cage with four of them. And so I just, instead of playing two and two, I just went full bore on Cage. Right. Ancient Stirrings also lets you find Engineered Explosives, which you have a two of in here. 
more yeah. answers to certain cards? Yeah, engineered explosives is actually something that I found that I thought of late. Uh, that really helps against uh, Merfolk, which is a pretty tough matchup because Merfolk can uh, handle big creatures pretty easily. And um, if if you play against something like Boggles, if Cedric's playing or anything, you <laughs> you have to have something to, for that deck. Or just uh, Zoo can just flood the board. And so an early engineered explosives against those kind of decks are just great. Yeah, Cedric bringing Boggles back to the <laughs> yeah. back to the front of you the modern know. community, and now everyone's like, I got to make sure I have something <laughs> to beat Boggles. <laughs> Uh, three timely reinforcements here, two Stony and Silence. We see these cards in all modern decks with white mana, basically. Right. The timely is pretty important because your burn matchups, zoo matchups are also pretty bad matchups game one. They're just too fast and can kill you too easily. And so the life gain is very important when you're playing slower four, five, and six mana creatures. Slower four, four, and five, fives. Yeah. Right. Eldrazi <laughs> Temple lets you play him a little ahead of curve. Yeah. Uh, the blue here allows you to splash some negates, some counter magic for things like Coco and other things. Yeah, I countered a negate against a Bring Delight earlier when I was playing Jeff Hooglin to win game three. Negate's just always important, but you don't really want more than two because you don't want to be drawing multiple negates and not have any pressure. Yeah. Then of course, Worldbreaker thanked us some more threats here, more life gain. But Worldbreaker just seems so good against yeah. the decks that are looking to grind you out, kind of being controlling. And Thragtusk is not only good against aggressive decks, but it's great against the control decks. And Thragtusk, especially with Eldrazi Displacer, they can get real dirty real yeah. fast. Flashbacks, Restoration Angel, <laughs> and Thragtusk. So, yeah. yeah. Well, we've seen that before, and this deck looks to be performed pretty well for you. Five-one start, showing that Eldrazi. They haven't gone anywhere. No. Nope. So. They're Todd, coming back. Thanks for joining me here on the sideboard. Thank you, Nick. Stay tuned to StarCityGames.com all weekend long for the action here in Indy.